Hey everybody, it's Jason with Outdoor Adventures and thank you for joining me for this beginner backpacking video. Today we're going to be talking about foot maintenance. Now let's first talk about something that you can do before you even get on the trail that will help toughen those feet up. Now what I like to do is since I have a dog and a neighborhood that I can walk around on a sidewalk, I tend to, you know, every day my dog and I go out, I take my socks and shoes off and I just walk around the sidewalk for about a mile around the neighborhood and I really try to toughen my feet up. I try to get the calluses started on my feet. Once your feet are conditioned enough, you shouldn't really have any problem with blisters, but we are gonna get into blister care in this video. Another thing you can do is try to keep your feet moisturized. Now, it's a little bit harder while you're out on the trail compared to being at your home, where you can just put moisturizer on your feet, you know, some Jergens, whatever. While out on the trail, there is hand and foot balm. This is an example of that. This is called Rocket Pure hand and foot balm. Now, you can look at Rocket Pure, you can look at Bonnie's balm. I'm sure there's a half a dozen other things that all do the same thing. But basically, this is just a tin full of balm, a salve or whatever you want to call it. And you just take your fingers and you gently rub it on the places that are dry or cracked on your feet. And if you do this before bed and you shove your foot in a sock after you're done and just go to sleep, your feet are going to wake up very, very refreshed and they are going to be very, very happy with you. Now, it may not seem like a manly thing to do while you're out on trail. I mean, carrying foot balm isn't exactly the most manliest thing you could do, but it does work. And if you would have told me that I'd be carrying something like this on every backpacking trip, I would have just laughed at you a couple years ago. But on all honesty, this stuff really works. Now, another thing that you want to make sure of is if your socks and your shoes fit properly. Now, we already covered this pretty much in the, I want to say, the second beginner backpacking video. So if you haven't seen that, be sure to check that out and just make sure you get the right type and size footwear and socks that you're going to need on a backpacking trip. It may take you a couple of months or years to even figure out exactly what you need, but you will eventually get there. Now, another thing I like to do to prevent blisters is I like to take off my shoes and socks during lunch or during breaks and let them air out for a good 30 minutes. Blisters happen very, very easily when your feet are wet with sweat, when you're walking in the rain, etc., etc., and it really, really hurts. The, the skin is just very fragile when it's wet, and that's where most of your blisters are going to be caused from sweat or moisture. So like I said, what I like to do is take my socks and shoes off during lunch, let them air out for 30 minutes, and then switch my socks and then get back on the trail. Now, inevitably, at some point, you're gonna have to deal with a blister. And here's what I do. This may not be the 100% correct way to do it, but this is what works for me. What I'll do is I'll take a safety pin, which always is in my first aid kit. I'll sterilize it with a lighter. Then I will go in from the side of the blister. I will poke the blister in one end and then back out the other end and I'll leave the needle in there for several seconds. And when I'm ready, I will take the needle out and I will slowly start to squeeze that liquid underneath that dead skin out of the blister. Now you don't want to cut the blister because that will just hurt and it's going to eventually grow back anyway. You want to just let the skin fall off naturally. It will build another layer underneath your blister and you'll be perfectly fine. Now, after a few minutes, probably five to 10 minutes, you'll be able to walk on that spot again without much pain. It's still gonna hurt just a little bit, but it's not gonna be anywhere near as painful as it was when you had the blister. Like I said, my recommendation, if you're close enough to camp, I would just wait till camp right before you go to bed to do it, because then you won't have to deal with walking on the blister and having that pain for a little bit. But if you're several miles away from camp, then you should just stop and do it right there. So if you followed these tips, hopefully you won't get any blisters, first of all. But now if you have a blister, you know how to deal with it. Another final thing that I could mention that I haven't tried myself is to, instead of poking it with a safety pin, poke it with a needle and thread and let that thread sit inside that blister overnight. Apparently what it does is it keeps draining that liquid out all night so you don't have to squeeze it out apparently now, I've never tried it I've just like to grit my teeth and just get that liquid out as fast as I could you know bear down on that pain get it done and over with 
Now I would really like to try that and I wish I could have tried it before this video, but I don't really get blisters anymore. All I really do is make sure my feet stay moisturized and I've really never had any problem with that because my feet are so conditioned from hiking these days. So if anyone has tried the needle and thread technique, I'd be interested to reading your success or failure story in the comments below. And if you have any questions about foot care and something that maybe is bothering you that you can't find online, I will try my best to answer that comment and get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks guys, I hope this helps somebody. And if anyone has any further beginner backpacking suggestions, please also let me know in those comments below. Thanks guys, and I'll see you on the trail.